Upcycle wrapping paper, three things I love on a scrapbook page, and a paper mache mannequin. A mix of ideas, supplies, and designs, all in one scrapbook soup. Today's scrapbook soup has been brought to you in part by Michael Stores Incorporated, where creativity happens. Michaels.com, Sakura Color Products of America, SakuraofAmerica.com. Welcome to Scrapbook Soup. It's our new look for scrapbooking where we mix it all up. Mix media, new designers, and more than pages. I'm Julie McGuffey, and this is Julie Faith Van Balzer. You've seen her before on the show as our lead designer, and she's stepping into hosting this season. Also, don't worry, we'll be seeing Beth again in the future, plus other talented designers. Now, what are we going to do today, Julie? We are making some upcycled wrapping paper. You know, I live in New York, and we get everything in boxes and packages, even my groceries. So it often comes stuffed with this packing paper, and I didn't want to put it to waste. Right. So I decided to make some wrapping paper. Waste not want not, right? Exactly. So you just smooth it out. You can even iron it if you're feeling a little bit, you know, if perfectionist. If we have an iron. And any <laughs> holes or anything, you can tape them. Mm -hmm. And once it is nice and flat for you, thank you, you're just going to take a permanent black marker of some kind um, and I'm using one that happens to have a bullet tip on one side and then it has a chisel tip on the other side and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the bullet tip on this okay. and I'm just gonna divide this into five segments with a double line between it and, and I'm, I'm not yeah I love that you're not using a ruler yeah I'm not worried about my lines being straight I think the point of handmade is that it looks handmade you know so I just go ahead and divide it up. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not worried if I actually go to the edge, if the segments are even. It is what it is, you know? I like that idea. Me too. No mistake. Exactly. So now, how about you? Most doodles are very, very simple designs. So for instance, an imperfect circle. And I'm just going to draw a whole bunch of these imperfect circles, making sure that I go a little bit off the edge here. And then I just do another imperfect circle inside. It doesn't matter if it's even or anything. I'm just having fun, playing around, having a good time, and boom, I've got a completed design in no time at all. You did that in about 10 seconds. I like exactly. it already. <laughs> and then I move on. Let's do some more messy lines and a couple more messy lines across, and immediately I have a grid going here. And again, it doesn't matter if I migrate into anywhere else. And I'm going to do the same thing I did here, which is an echo, right? A circle inside a circle, mm -hmm. a square inside a square. You just keep playing and having fun. This is a great thing to do with your kids, you know, it's something fun to do in front of the TV. Well, I like it, especially for children, because they don't. Have, it doesn't have to be perfect. No, and you know what? I think encouraging people not to be perfect in art makes them remember that in other parts of their life, right. they don't have to be perfect either. So I'm just dividing the squares up like this. You can see how easy it is, and again, nothing hard about this. Now we're going to move on to something that I think people get a little intimidated by, which is drawing flowers. And I'm Aww. going to show you how very easy it is. <laughs> so you simply take half a circle, mm -hmm. right? And then I do three little, I guess what you would call fingers, something okay. like that. I finish up my circle, and I just draw a stock on it. And then I have a poppy. Totally done. That is really awesome. Really easy. And then I can do it now, of course, at all other angles, as if it were going to continue this way. Uh -huh. I can draw a random stalk or stem as if it were coming in there. Maybe do another one here. And again, perfection is overrated. You know, perfect people are boring. Well, and that's so very, very ones. true. Yes. So the next one, again, very easy. Uh -huh. We're just going to do a triangle. And here's the thing that I know, which is one of anything is great, but a million of something is really satisfying. So you see that if we just 
fill it in with lots and lots and lots of triangles, you start to have a pattern. That's cool because if you just do one thing, your eye kind of settles on that, but if yeah. you've got lots, it kind of goes it all over all the place. Over. And so now we're just going to draw a line and a couple scallops. Easy enough. And you could just continue that design. And then I happen to have one here for the magic of TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's already all doodled. And you can see all my designs out there. So now we're going to add some watercolor paints. And I have a very expensive paint palette here. You know, hard to come by. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, these are watercolors that happen to come in a tube. They're the same as regular watercolors, except that you can use them straight from the tube and they're very intense. But when they dry, you can reactivate them just with a little bit of water. And today I'm gonna to put out the three primary colors, which are yellow, red, and blue. And I just wanna show you how easy it is to use just three colors to really dress up your project. So we're just gonna add accent colors. So I just have a brush and I'm gonna load it up with water. And then poppies are red. So we're just gonna paint, and again, we're not gonna worry about being perfect. I'm just gonna get sloppy and messy. And just and go right outside those have lines. Have a good time yeah. with it, man, you know? So I'm just going to go ahead and rub it around, get some accent colors in there. And then, yes, you can paint the design in, but how about with the triangles? What if we paint the background in? And that is actually gonna pop those uh -huh. triangles forward. So if I paint the background, and again, I'm just being messy, I'm using lots of water, and I can do it on top of this brown paper. People get nervous about painting, especially with a transparent something like uh -huh. watercolor. They get nervous about painting on top of it, but And it's also ahead. really important that that is a permanent marker, right? Otherwise, yes. you can have black smudges, which actually yes. might look really cool. I think so, very artistic, very fun. And um, so I'm just gonna keep painting this in, and you can see how painting the background also gives it some color, mm -hmm. right? Now, another thing that I like to do is you don't always have to paint within the lines for real, for real. And what I mean by that is, what if I decide in this area to just do some dashes? Oh, that's you know? cool, yeah. Just because mm -hmm. you didn't doodle something doodly, there. Doodle with your brush and your doodle paint. With Let your me brush. ask you something, though, yeah. Julie. If you uh, just did it, this design here, mm -hmm. like all over yellow, mm -hmm. and then you, you could add the blue to the triangles, that, that exactly. would be green then, right? Exactly, let's do that. So here you go, we can add some blue in the triangles, or if we mix it in, you can see how you're getting your green right there. That's cool. Okay, now cool? we've done this great paper, yes. now what are we gonna do with it? Well, dun dun dun! <laughs> here is the fabulous finished paper, which I think looks so cool. And you can see that I've used it for two things over here. One, I've wrapped a package with it and even made a little bow to go it's on beautiful. top. Totally cute. And the other one is, you can actually, of course, make your own paper. I've put it on a scrapbook layout here, which I, is super fun. Yeah, and then you've actually done the little border design on the bottom yeah. also with the wrapping paper. Exactly. And then I wanted to show, because a lot of people get the white packing paper. So I did a butterfly design here, and you can see it's half painted, just so I could show people what it looks like when it's doodled. And again, you don't have to paint it. You could just leave it doodled. And then I have a flower design, which if you really don't want to stay within the lines, I didn't even worry about the design. I, I love just that. did the background. I can see that frame. Hey, Julie, thank you so much. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Scrap of Soup is all about a mix of media and also techniques. And Tanya Lutz is here from Faber-Castell with this great project. And this is a lot of different techniques in this project. And you're going to show us a little bit about each one, right, Tanya? Exactly. So it's really bringing a lot of color in and mixing mediums. It's really going to be fun. All right. Now, we're so, we going to start with rubber stamping. Yes. So what we're going to do is actually I'm going to show how you can use this India ink marker on a stamp. So mm -hmm. it's instead of a stamp pad, it's nice that you can actually, we're going to blend colors and they are actually very inky as you'll see. You can really, the yeah, really nice durable. To you. And I know India <laughs> ink, it's archival, it's light fast, and it's also waterproof, which is really nice exactly. when we're working with. And there's no odor too, which is really nice when you're working with it. Oh, and that was so quick. Yeah, and you can see it's a very wet medium. Uh-huh. Here's oh, that's first pretty. stamp. Isn't that fun? That's fun. So it's really nice to be able to blend the colors and, and combine colors all in one stamp. You can really control it nicely. Okay. Now, how, how are we going to clean this after we finish stamping? Yeah, you can actually just use soap and water. Um, it, oh, it, it is permanent uh -huh. when it's dry, so you may see a little bit of residue, but it won't come off on, okay, your, on so your project. Okay, so clean it up pretty quickly, right? Yes. <laughs> Now you have some other pictures on here with lots of color. Yes, so um, after you've gone ahead and stamped your mm -hmm. different one, two, three, we're gonna go ahead and start and show just how a simple doodle, you can really just start with a nice little mosaic, simply doodle and add color. So 
So we'll start with this. And you used a fine tip pen for doing the doodling to start with. Yes, I just started with a, an, an India ink pen, which is um, Well, it's the important, again, because then it, it is waterproof. Right, exactly. Very good. So then, to your point, we'll use a watercolor pencil. So again, I'll just color in some areas. Those colors are so intense. Very vibrant. That is really pretty. Now, this is a watercolor pencil, so if we wanted, we could just add a, uh, spread it out a little bit yes, with a damp Actually, brush. We'll do or... that so you can see how it'll release. And you can see it'll really, it stays very vibrant. Nice. But if you wanted to create some washes, you could actually mm -hmm. go ahead and lighten it out. Oh, just it spreads all over. Mm -hmm. And you could probably blend, again, blend different colors together. Exactly. So we're also going to go ahead and, and use um, another medium. Okay, now that looks, is that chalk? It, it works just like a chalk. It's um, a pastel, but mm -hmm. it's a little easier to control with this technique. You can actually write in it, fill in details. Yeah, because you, have, you, you have a nice point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So it does blend too. You can use your finger or a blending tool to, to right, blend or a cotton swab exactly. or even a little sponge or something. So here I, I have a piece that where you've just added more color. Mm -hmm. So again, it's all about just bringing color in different mediums. I'll okay. move over to this oh, one. And the hearts. <laughs> we so. all love hearts, don't we? <laughs> we do. <laughs> so this is actually um, a, a, a really fun way to add color, and this is really creamy. This is a pigment stick. Oh my gosh, it looks like a lipstick. It really does, <laughs> and, it, and it feels like a lipstick yeah, too. Yeah, I was going to say, can I try that? <laughs> that, real, that really is soft. It's very wow. creamy, and it blends really uh -huh. nicely. You can blend it again um, directly into the paper. And it's also, you can add water to it too, which we'll do here. You can see, you can go all the way up. Lots of different colors. Yeah, it's a really nice way to lay down color in, in a lot of different effects, very mm -hmm. light, very dark. And I like the way the colors of these different uh, pens are, are put together because they, they all cord, they're all in a color family. Yeah. So we don't have to make any decisions about what should I get exactly. this green or this blue <laughs> done for. It makes it very easy for you, okay. a nice color collection to work with. Here again, you can see using, um, again, another nice the, way to add pastel. color in. Uh -huh. You know, normally I've seen pastels in like blocks and yes. they're fun too, but this is really nice because like, you know, you have a point on there, mm -hmm. you can do all the little details and everything. Exactly. And what about the yellow on the background? Okay, so the yellow is also, um, excuse me, using the pigment stick and you can see just, um, again, creamy. But what we're going to do is add another texture to it using gesso. So gesso is uh, just a nice way to add new effects to paper crafts. This is mm -hmm. on a watercolor paper. I'm just going to apply it, and what it'll do is it will blend into, uh, it'll blend into the color, and you'll see it. It'll create more of an opaque type of look again. Just a, a, another technique that you can do to create another dimension. And it's also going to seal that color, right? It does seal mm -hmm. it. You're right. It's also good for covering up mistakes if you want to <laughs> do it very darkly. Right, and I know that when it dries, the colors will be more intense. So, do you have an, an example of what it yes, looks like when it's dry? I'll show you the. Once it dries, That's you can beautiful. see you can actually really blend mm -hmm. it in. This is adding a little bit okay. more water. Let's make the bird pop. one. Okay, because that has a little bit of a shimmer and a glimmer to it. I like that. <laughs> Starting again, just a simple outline. It doesn't have. You don't have to be an artist. Just putting a doodle down with with the ink pen, and then we're adding color to the background. So this is starting with, again, a pigment stick. And this time as we add the pigment stick, we're going to add a glaze to it. Mm -hmm. And the glaze will give it another sheen. So we don't even have to let it dry or anything like that? No, you can add it right in and it'll mm -hmm. blend together very nicely. Like you'll see here right away. So you can see mm -hmm. the glaze is actually now tinted. That is really pretty. And okay. then you have a finished one. We do. And you can see this has added the ink to the top. So again, all the, these work very well together. Really pretty. Tanya, we only have a few seconds left, so let's have a look at the last one, which okay. we have over here with the flowers mm -hmm. on this beautiful page. Things I really love. I like that. <laughs> That's a great project. Super Thank you so that. much for sharing all these great techniques oh, with you're us. You're welcome. It's great to be here. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be right back. 
Well, I'm here with Joe Pearson from Michaels, and she has brought an absolutely stunning angel project, which we're going to learn how to make. So, Joe, will you tell us how to do this? I absolutely will. You know what? When we first, when one of the girls in the studio first did this, I was like, wow, that is, it's just really different. Mm -hmm. So, I want to show you what we've started with, and that is just a paper mache mannequin. Okay. So, I said, okay, I want you to go give me something out of the box. So, what we're going to start with, um, a piece of map of um, canvas, canvas board. board. And we are going to take gesso, mm -hmm. and we are going to just cover. And gesso is just a primer, right? That's correct. That's okay. correct. So we're going to put a good amount mm -hmm. of gesso, and we were going to we're going to totally cover okay. this board. And then I want to show you what we're going to do with the stylist okay. on here. And I like gesso so much because it dries with that really matte finish, which is so nice, and gives it this real shabby chic look that you have going on here. Well, and what's fun about it too is that it really covers really nice in one coat. It does. So I've I've got pretend like I've got gesso all over this. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a stylist and I'm going to write a little message in here. So it really doesn't matter, and I can't write upside down. So I'm going to okay. write this way, okay? And, and just you use can your own see, handwriting. Right. Okay, you're just scratching it into the paint. I'm scratching it into the paint, okay. but I want to show you. This is going to be that. you take Thank that. You. And look what we did here. So that's exactly what we did. This is this is mm -hmm. probably pretty thick on here. So then I just took some strips of torn newspaper, which oh. was really kind of fun, and we added it to the back of this. Now this one's dry, so I want to show you. We want to take some burnt umber, okay, and a little bit of um uh of the extender? Ex of the extender. Mm -hmm. Which just, that. when you use acrylic paint with an extender, it does what? It makes it so that the paint doesn't dry so fast. It gives you a lot more working time mm -hmm. to go with that. So we're just going to take our brush and we're just going to pick up a little bit and we're just, I'm just going to kind of work it in here. Now, one of the things mm -hmm. to remember, you can always go back and add some more on there, but it's harder to take harder it to off. Harder to take it so, off, especially because this is acrylic paint, right. so when it dries, it's there forever. So start off, you know, with a small amount, and you can go back with the retarder, mm -hmm. or I mean with the extender. Which is another word for and an you extender. Can, it, right, <clears throat> and you can go back, and you can wipe it off. So what we've done then mm -hmm. is we'll go, maybe it'll be kind of easy for you to see kind of it. I want and to show that's going to make words. that scratching mm -hmm. in that you did really pop out, right? Absolutely, so see, you can just go, and if you wanted it to be really dark, you could mm -hmm. have it much, you know, you could obviously put more on Use there. Use a lot more. Okay, but now I want to show you, let's okay. get started on our mannequin. Thank you. So what I did is I just took the mannequin, and again, we just covered it in the white gesso to give us a base. Yes. So our next one, what we did, and this has got some pieces of paper, mm -hmm. so all I'm going to do is I'm going to use some gel medium. Okay. And I have some little torn pieces of newspaper here. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can use scrap of paper if mm -hmm. you wanted to, but we kind of like the, the Now, do you look. worry at all about using newspaper since it will yellow, or is the gel medium going to seal it? Oh, the gel medium is going to seal it. Well, that's and great. And you know what? Even if it, I mean, even, that's going to just give you that other look. Right. I mean, you know, a little bit of a different look. So look, we're just going to take some pieces. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to put them on here, and then we can just cover mm -hmm. back over. So, so you're just I using put, a little bit of gesso on top of that to lighten it up even more. I did, more. because I wanted to cover up. I didn't really want to see the newspaper print on there. Okay, so then what we did, I'm going to give you that one. Thank you. And so here you can see we've got it on here. Mm -hmm. Now the fun part, I want to show you how to make these great wings. Oh, cool. This is just... Um, it's about a 12 gauge aluminum wire, so it's pretty, and you know, there's not a right or wrong way to shape a wing, so we've just kind of shaped a little And are you using your hands here. or tools? No, just shaped it with our hands, and it's easy enough to bend mm -hmm. so that you could really shape them any way you want, and they don't have to match, which is kind right. of the beauty of it. You want it to just be, you really want it to be kind of artsy. So we're going to take cheesecloth. Mm -hmm. Which you can get in the grocery store and right. stuff, right? <clears throat> right. Or you can get it at your craft or paint store. So I'm going to take the wing and I'm going to kind of lay it down on there. And then and you're working on top of the palette paper because... Well, I don't want it to get all over my table. Okay. <laughs> you know, sometimes it is we start these great projects and before you know it, we've got right. something on our table. So I like to work on palette paper. So we're going to take our gel medium mm -hmm. and look what we're going to do. We're kind of just going to put this mm, you're coating the whole over thing. here. And I'm just going to take and put a bunch on there. And I'm just going to kind of shape this. You're going to wrap it around the top so it creates a seal right. around both parts of the wire. That's Absolutely. really a smart and way to do And what's going to happen then, as this dries, mm -hmm. it's going to dry, it's going to dry stiff. Right. So look what I'm doing. I'm really just bunching that up on there and putting on the gel medium. And now I want to show you. So there's no right or wrong reason mm -hmm. on how I did that. I'm going to set that one aside. I want to show you a couple of the wings that we've made. Okay. So, so you can just see they're not, 
They're not the same shape. Mm -hmm. Some of the cheesecloths we've kind of left off. Right. So now let's take, and we did the same thing. I'm going to show you. We just took some of the cheesecloth and kind of draped it on the mannequin. Gave her a little bit of clothing yeah. so she wasn't quite so. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So we have our angel all ready to just put the wings on. And you can just go and just hot glue the wings off the back. And then just glue it to your, glue it into your canvas board in your frame. Well, that sure is easy. And I see that you brought some other mannequins here that are dressed up in some fabulous paper outfits. It's amazing to think that that's the same mannequin, but it is. And just taking beautiful scrapbook paper and some bling, yeah, with a bit of glitter. Very different looks. And there's even a huge mannequin here in our studio, which is also beautifully covered in butterflies and some wonderful paper flowers. Yeah, it, it, it certainly is. Well, thank you so much for a fabulous project, You're Joe. quite welcome. And we'll be right back. Well, we've mixed it up today. Now it's time to put it all back together with a final idea and a new supply you might not have considered. Tissue paper dress patterns. I can't believe what you're going to do with these. Well, I'm really excited. I think this is a fun thing to do. So I just have a plain piece of craft colored cardstock here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use a really thin gel medium. I mean, you, I know I'm the sort of the supply girl, but I actually have three kinds of gel medium because you use them for different things. And this is a really thin one, you can see. Uh -huh. It's super, super, super liquid. And I am just spreading it out on here, all messy, messy. That's why I've got this Teflon sheet under here because mm -hmm. I want to be able to just. Right. I'll scrub it on there, right. okay? Then I just take a piece of a old dress pattern. It can be used, I just ripped oh, it. Oh, you're tearing it. And I want there to be <gasps> bubbles and wrinkles. Most uh -huh. of the time, you know, we're so busy trying to smooth it out and make sure that there isn't mm -hmm. any of that. And I'm actually wanting to create texture. And I'm just gonna go back in and put some more gel medium on top. So this is kind of like a glue. It is, it's it is. It's decoupaging with tissue. You could use any kind of decoupage mm -hmm. medium, really. You could use a really thin down white glue, whatever you would like. And you'll notice that I'm not using a foam brush. A lot of people feel like they have to use foam brushes when they're using glue because they want to be able to dispose it. Right. As long as you soak your brush in water, and you can see I have my water right here, you have absolutely no problem doing that and your brush is totally saved. And I always think it's better to use a bristle brush, you just get better results. Well, it's softer and sponge brushes that tend mm -hmm. to be a little bit rough. They have a rough exactly. texture. Exactly. You can see how messy I'm being. I want a ton and ton of texture on here. And I would just continue to rip and layer and rip and layer. And you can see how easy it is to just play. Now, sometimes you want something from the pattern in particular to show. Like, let's say I was doing um, a layout about like a birthday party and it was somebody's 10th birthday party and mm -hmm. I really want that tent, which actually means it's a size 10 tent. on the pattern, but we're just not gonna tell anybody <laughs> that. Well, I'm looking at the dotted lines too. That'd be a very border. cool. So I can just rip it out and I can actually sort of mentally think, well, where am I gonna put everything on the layout? Okay, I guess I'll put this piece in particular right here so that it exactly shows. And you can see it goes a little bit transparent once you put it on. And then I know when I start to put together my layout that that's exactly where it'll be, which right. I really, really like. Now, you could just let it dry like this and then cut off the excess so it's perfectly square. But I like to work in layers. Yes, we know that, Julie. <laughs> so I like to add a little bit of a water-based spray ink and I spray liberally. You can see that's just a nice yellow and I'm gonna dip into my water and I'm just gonna spread that around. And it adds just a little, it deepens the color a touch, mm -hmm. you know, which I really like. it also makes those little crinkles and everything pop. Yeah, it does. Then I'm just gonna take an acrylic paint. This is a nice, full, heavy-bodied acrylic. And I'm just gonna dip in. Now this is where I wanna use a ton of water and a very little bit of paint. So I'm going to kind of dap it in there a little bit and then I'm going to soak my brush in water and then you see how I just trailed oh, that water yeah, all over there wet. and I am just going to let that paint it gives just a hint of purple, but it's not an intense purple. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a really effective way of coloring. It's almost like tinting more than actually painting it's like anything. like what we call a color wash. Exactly, exactly. And you can see that the layout that's over by you, that's what I've done to the background. I added some splats and splotches. You can see some of that nice spray ink, and that's a dress pattern right in the back of that. So and easy. Spray it with a toothbrush. Yeah, and you they see all that texture uh -huh. on there too. And then, this is really exciting, I got some contributions from some blog readers out there and they have sent in some beautiful projects that they've made using tissue paper dress patterns. 
Very cool. So this first one over here, that's from Pam Cook, and she is from uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And she has made this beautiful, it's sort of a card or portfolio, whatever you want to call it. You can open it up and see. She's got a drawing inside. You can see the back of the stitching she did on the front. Mm -hmm. And she did a photo transfer on the front of that and then covered it up with a um, dress paper pattern, and it's gone all transparent, which is really cool. And then up front, I have this beautiful handbag journal and this is from Michelle LaPointe Rydell and she's from Minneapolis Minnesota and she bound this journal all by herself it's her art journal and the front of it is a tissue paper dress pattern and you can see when it dries it's a little more opaque she's mm -hmm. painted on the front of it and she started a couple pages inside her book and she's also done the inside of the she cards. has it's gorgeous right that is just absolutely gorgeous. I love Julie. the vibrant colors in here. Oh, you know? I do too. And I love the binding on that mm -hmm. book. That was just absolutely beautifully done. You can see some familiar scrapbooking supplies along with some magazine cutouts. You know, anything goes these mm -hmm. days. Yes. Yeah. The more the merrier, right? I love it. And just paint and swirling and no rules. Julie, these are great techniques. And all the instructions for these projects will be on the website. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon as we add more ingredients to our scrapbook soup. Visit ScrapbookSoupTV.com for a mix of ideas, a mix of ingredients, a mix of designers, and all of the instructions for every project found on this series of Scrapbook Soup. Create your own recipe for great scrapbooking. This is Show 101, a complete set of all 13 episodes of Scrapbook Soup Series 100 is available for $39.99 plus shipping and handling. A mix of designers, techniques, and projects, all in one complete package to watch anytime. Visit ScrapbookSoupTV.com to place your order. Today's Scrapbook Soup has been brought to you in part by Michael Stores Incorporated, where creativity happens. Michaels.com, Sakura Color Products of America, SakuraofAmerica.com.